Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with a very special gameplay for you today. I'm going to be commentating over a raw, non-theater mode gameplay capture in 1080p 60 frames per second of a 47 kill, zero death, unfreaking believable perfection while playing the big team battle playlist in Halo 5 Guardians. The map is Risen, the game type is Big Team Slayer, and originally I only went into this specific game with three other teammates in my lobby. So we had a party of four, and we started up Big Team Battle Matchmaking and got this game. And it was pretty casual, the um, like the verbal like vibe between my teammates. Uh, I was actually talking to them about um, movies and various things of that nature. In fact, uh, at one point during the gameplay, I actually go behind the outer tower and modify my chat party option. So by no means was I going for this gameplay at all. I did not expect this to happen, and it's just uh, very, very rare that this occurs. Um, in Warzone and in objective game modes, uh, you can artificially extend the game um, to gain more time so that you can get more kills to get uh, more killing sprees, essentially. So getting a 40 kill spree in a Warzone game that goes the full length, um, the full length of time, or in a Big Team Slayer game where you are uh, you know, farming the enemy team um, because you're holding the flag uh, longer than you should and artificially extending the length of the game, uh, you know, it's not unheard of or uh, really um, as impressive, I feel like, for someone to get a 40 kill spree during games like that. Um, not saying that you know some people wouldn't find that impressive I'm, I'm sure it is but the main thing that uh, stuck out to me about this gameplay that i got is that the game type is big team slayer i am simply ending the game as fast as i possibly can and i never expected especially with four other random teammates um, in our lobby um, one of which drops um, by the end of the game i never expected to get 47 kills and zero deaths in this game and there's actually only one other point during this gameplay where I'll speed it up so that, you know, just to save you some time. And it's the only section of the gameplay where, you know, for a few seconds, uh, I didn't find anyone and I did, couldn't find a kill. Um, the vast majority of the gameplay is me consistently finding players to shoot at and get kills. Um, and there's actually only one player in the game on the enemy team who once, and I'll point it out, um, wasn't actually playing when I first start shooting him. So he was, you know, standing still for a little bit. But as soon as I start shooting him, he starts moving. Um, and, you know, it's it just all the more impressive for that because I wasn't shooting people who you know, weren't playing the game. Um, so I'm going to be giving you guys a few tips and tricks on how to drive the Wasp more effectively. Um, I'll be showing you guys my button configuration or button layout on my Elite Controller for driving the Wasp at the end of the game via screenshot. Um, so you can pause the video. Um, then if you want to, uh, you know, copy that over to your own Elite Controller, here's the player who was AFK for a brief moment, uh, but you can see he starts playing again as soon as I start shooting him. So the main thing about the WASP that I want to communicate to you guys is that the shield bar at the top of the screen is not connected to your WASP's shields. Your WASP has a separate, independent shield bar that you cannot see. The only way you can see how much shields your wasp has is by physically looking at your wasp on the bottom of the screen. Notice my shields are flaring yellow right now, and they're going to go, you know, they're going to have that little audio effect and that whoosh sound as the shields begin to regenerate. Um, so when you, like right now I've lost shields and I need to get out. This is all these speckledy like uh, sparks all over my wasp. That's because I have no shields. And when you have no shields and you're taking damage, it's permanent damage to your wasp. But when your shields are being shot, in other words, your wasp shields are being shot, you are not taking permanent damage to your wasp. Your shields are taking damage. So ideally what you want to do is peek out with full shields, get a kill, and then go back behind cover. You don't ever want to engage like a bunch of people, multiple players who are all looking at you because the wasp is a very, uh, very delicate vehicle. Um, it is not a tank. Um, I've seen a lot of players uh, drive a wasp uh, incorrectly, um, as if it was this tank that you are flying around in midair where you can just engage a bunch of different targets and soak up all this damage. Uh, you need to use your wasp as if you're a Spartan. 
um, as if you know you could die from just a few shots. Now here's the point in the film where I speed it up just a little bit just because you know, I didn't find anyone. It's just a very short section of the film here. But keep that tip in mind when you're piloting a wasp. Another tip I want to throw out there um, is your use of your rockets. And you'll see me do this a few times during this gameplay. But basically what I'm trying to do is with my rockets, I'm trying to finish kills or shoot my rockets midway into a battle. The only time you'll see me uh, fire my rockets at the beginning of me in engaging a kill is if I'm really trying to get the kill very, very, very quickly and I have no other choice. Um, most of the time you want to be firing your rockets uh, near to a surface where the player is standing and it, you don't need to fire your rockets at the beginning of, of your battle. You want to kind of fire them midway. Um, midway so that you can put the maximum amount of damage and you know the last few chips of damage you can use your machine gun to clean them up. You can kill one fully shielded player with one you know uh, full uh, chain gun usage uh, on your wasp before you overheat uh, but it's better to alternate between um, you know your chain gun and your missiles um, or rocket should I say to maximize your effectiveness on the battlefield. Um, it's very, very important. Now, the next thing I want to touch on um, is your button uh, layout when you're driving the Wasp. Um, most players will shift their left and right index fingers up to their bumpers, their left and right bumper, to be able to gain and lose altitude with their Wasp. And they'll use their left and right middle fingers on the triggers to shoot the Wasp rockets and machine gun. For me, this gets really, really confusing. I end up panic pressing certain buttons, like when I want to gain altitude, I'll accidentally fire a missile, or when I you know, want to lose altitude, I'll accidentally fire the chain gun. So my strong recommendation, if you have an elite controller, is to map the left bumper to your bottom left paddle, your longest paddle on the left-hand side, your bottom left paddle, and map your right bumper to your bottom right paddle. In other words, you can gain altitude by pressing your bottom left paddle, and you can lose altitude by pressing your bottom right paddle. And this frees up the rest of your hand to grip your controller, and you can just only use your left and right index fingers to press the triggers. It kind of spaces the buttons out, if you will, so that you're not, your brain isn't as confused um, when you are uh, trying to press various buttons. And it really allows you to move around the map very effectively, and to be a much more uh, deadly wasp pilot overall. Definitely experiment with this in custom games and see what works for you. Another tip I really like to give people is always modify your movement analog stick to be aggressive, okay? There's like certain settings like you can modify your analog sticks to be smooth, to be normal, and most of the time you just wanna leave it on the default setting, okay? There's no really need to change it. But in the WASP specifically, with your WASP button configuration that you should be saving to the secondary slot on your Elite controller, so when you get into a WASP, you can switch over to that secondary WASP uh, button configuration slot, you really want to make sure that your movement analog stick is set to aggressive. This compensates for the WASP being kind of slow or sluggish when you're trying to move in a direction. Now, of course, you know, the WASP is generally like this, uh, normally when you're driving it, which is fine, or when you're piloting it, should I say. But you can minimize this effect, and you can be even more effective in the WASP by making your movement analog stick aggressive, so that when you press in a certain direction, or you peg your stick in a certain direction to move that way, your uh, WASP will react more quickly and efficiently to what you're inputting into your controller, which is really, really nice. Um, but guys, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. We're kind of nearing the last few kills here. Of course, I'll show you my medals, my stats at the end of the game, and even my button configuration that I've modified for my Elite controller. If you want to see my other uh, button configuration things like my sensitivity and stuff, all of that is in the description um, below this video. Um, I was really glad I got to live capture this and it's not a theater mode gameplay, therefore, you know, all the shots you're seeing are actually accurate and on point. Um, you know, shout out to my three uh, teammates from Exo Delta Gaming who were uh, in this gameplay uh, with me. Um, it was really, really cool to get this gameplay and I'm, I'm really happy to uh, share it with you guys. 
I think I've gotten one or two uh, unfreaking believables um, past uh, this gameplay. But up until I had got this gameplay, this was the uh, this is the first one that I had ever gotten. So there's the perfection medal you can see at the bottom of your screen. Um, the enemy team actually only ended up having five players on their team at the end there, as you can see. Um, so there's my stats. You know, 47 kills, six assists, zero deaths. I'm um, going to scroll, uh, you know, over to my medals here. I'm also going to show you, you know, as I said earlier, a screenshot of my uh, button configuration for my Elite Controller. But guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, like the video. It helps other people find it. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you uh, in my next video. Peace, guys.